Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Be Creative. My name's Hannah, and today I'm teaching you another improv game. This one is really easy to play over Zoom, but it's also really easy to play with family and friends uh, who are in the same room as you. So whichever situation you're in, you can find somebody to play this game with. It's got a whole bunch of different variations, but I'm going to teach you the main version first and then talk a little bit about how you can shake it up at the end. So the game is called Press Conference. It works best with at least three people. You can do it with two, it's just more difficult. The way you play it is one person leaves the room and while they're gone, everybody else decides for them what kind of person they're going to be, usually a celebrity or a famous fictional character, and uh, what they're going to be announcing at the press conference they're giving when they come back in. Once everybody's decided, they come back in and they then have to answer questions like they're at a press conference, except of course they don't know who they are or what they're announcing. So this is a game about working together. The person who's on the spot has to kind of improvise answers despite the fact that they don't know what anybody's talking about or asking about. Your job as, uh, as audience members or as, uh, as not improvising players get to ask questions, get to try to give clues to the person who's having to improvise back to you. It's a lot of fun. Half the fun comes from the improviser saying something just wilder out there that doesn't fit at all. But what I love about this game is that even the wrong answers are helpful because even if the improviser says something that's completely wrong, the fact that everybody will then laugh at that will give them a clue and will let them know, oh, that wasn't who I thought I was. I was wrong. So the goal is for the improviser to eventually guess who they are, in character if they can. I'm gonna show you an example of it being played with me and a couple of my improv friends. You'll see clips of it, and I'm gonna put up on the screen all the different clues that we gave, just in case you didn't get them. Uh, I'm also gonna note on the screen times when we realize what he's learned. This game is all about listening to each other. So the improviser has to listen to the clue givers and try to figure out how to put together all those pieces. And the clue givers should listen to the improviser and figure out what do they know, what do they not know, what pieces do we still need to give them. So let me show you an example and then I'll come back at the end and talk a little bit about what, uh, what else you can do with this game. I just want to thank you for having me here. I appreciate the opportunity and I, I can't be more grateful. Uh, I want to ask, first of all, before we even get started, I want to address the elephant in the room. Uh, I want to address that you, um, your voice has, has changed a lot. Um, your, your manner of speaking has changed a lot. And I, I'm curious which, um, whether this is more you, which, which version of, of this voice is more uh, authentic to who you are and which one is more a, a performance. I do have a different voice and sometimes even a different personality for, for every single element that, that I approach. And so would I say this one is more true to who I am? I think so. Is this then the voice that you will be using forward as you step into this new career? I mean, it's hard to say that things are going to stay permanent. Uh, I mean, for right now, this is the voice I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, it's not like I can't just go back to other voices at any point. Right. So it is something that, could I say that at least for the foreseeable future, yes. I'm going to keep this, the, this persona intact. I, I think that's probably, I think that makes sense. This is, uh, that's a, a sound that is a little bit more, um, it, it aligns a little bit closer with the established sounds of, uh, of the field so far. Um, I'm really curious about whether you think you're going to be able to, to bring any of your previous fans over. Um, are you worried that, about having to censor yourself at all? Are you worried about having to change the content? If I continue to do the same things, number one, I'm never going to grow as an artist. Uh, number two, the, the same people... I'm never going to help them. I'm not going to challenge them to experience new things. So my hope is that I can combine the two worlds. That's interesting. You know, I do have a quote here from you uh, that said that uh, you have learned a lot on the streets um, and that that is a, a primary reason for moving into this new career. Um, would you like to expand on that at all? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's been nothing, uh, nothing that I've experienced in the past and all of the things that I went through, um, uh, all of those times have come to make me who I am today. And so, you know, I, I'm thrilled that I get to, to 
let that be still be a part of my life and be an influence onto onto my current fans and my my next mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've worked with a lot of celebrities. Are you uh, going to be able to leverage that relationship in any way going forward? Are any of them going to be guests on your your upcoming project? That's a good question. The, there's absolutely no doubt. Um, I am going to continue to have uh, more and more people uh, that that you've seen that you've seen me work with in the past, and we are going to continue to to work together. And with any luck, I can get them to give a whole brand new genre to their style as well. Now, in the past, you have followed a very educational. Uh, pushed model of singing you know you want us to learn new things i i know that i have learned a lot from you moving forward are you going to continue with these these sort of educational songs and how will that fit into the new genre well um i think that we can do educational music in multiple formats and i don't think it's right to continue it where it's just one type of music or it it can't be limited to one type of music and so and maybe it's not even limited to music perhaps Mm -hmm. we're going to branch out even further and we're going to do more than music i you know i know of several artists that have moved uh away from multiple names down to one name but considering that right now you already have just the one name and that is the entirety of the, the character, uh, do you plan on expanding your name further or keeping the name that you have? Do you, do you plan any alterations? Well, you know, and, and with that, you know, Slim Shady, Eminem, Marshall Mathers, he went through some of those changes too in the same field. That's very true. And, you know, I was, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I may change the name up a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm leaning at this time towards grammarly responsible. And actually, I think you might have a pretty good idea of where you're going. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask, do you know who you are and do you know what you're announcing to us? Uh, My thoughts are that I'm Bozo the Clown and I'm getting ready to release a gangster rap album. Okay. Okay. So now we know what you know. We can see if we can get you around there. Um, I think you would be, to my knowledge, the first uh, non-human to ever do this, <laughs> to ever be part of this creative field. Um, how do you feel about that being so, be, breaking that ground? I mean, everybody loves me. I love everybody. And uh, I, I think it's going to be revolutionary to, to have, have, have my purple self out there. Uh, you know, you say purple. I think that uh, I might need to change the, the color settings on my TV. <laughs> but uh, I, I do have a question uh, on behalf of the letter C. Um, I was just wondering, uh, in the past, you have had lots of individuals prop you up, you know, help keep you standing and, and uh, offer you support when you wanted to speak. Um, do, you, do you plan on going forward solo? Will you bring some of your friends with you? I'm not doing this without Animal. He's coming in to lay down some sick beats. Those are two more questions. All right, give us your final guess. Okay, um, I can't ever remember his name, but the Count from uh, Sesame Street. Uh, And uh, I'm still going with gangster rap. I don't know why. You are absolutely correct in that you are pursuing a gangster rap career. (laughs) Uh, You are are Elmo. (laughs) Elmo. Ah. We got you almost there. You were almost to the end. That That was so close. Awesome. I was th- yeah, I was I was sitting there thinking the gangster rap. If anybody had done that little potty dance jig for a <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I was I was trying to figure out how to work in a joke about tickling and <laughs> tickle me all yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would have been good. All right, so you can see how that works. How uh, Adam did a great job responding, even if he didn't have any idea what was going on. And sometimes those answers were spot on, and sometimes those answers were confusing when he suddenly announced he was purple. Uh, so you can have a lot of fun with this and shake this up as often as you want. Once you figured out the format, you can have the person who leaves figure out all kinds of things. I've done a version where they play a witness to a very unusual crime. Maybe a horse walked down the street and kicked over a hot dog cart. <laughs> and 
and they have to come back in and with the detective asking them questions they have to find their way around the actual story. I've also done a version where it's somebody uh, who works at a store and people keep returning the specialty unused bizarre item that has broken in some way or other and with acting and with descriptions they have to get the other person to guess what this item was and what it was supposed to do. So you can come up with your own variations. You can have the person who leaves guess almost anything as long as you come up with a way that it would make sense for you to be interacting with them and giving them clues about it. This is one of my favorite games and I love playing it and I love hearing stories about how people played it. If you play this, I would love to hear those stories. I would love to hear what you came up with and what people had to guess and how wrong they were and what was the clue that let you know where you were. Uh, so tell me all these stories down in the comments and I hope you take this and play this with friends and family. And don't forget to tune in again tomorrow at 1 p.m. for more Let's Be Creative Arts content. We will see you then.